So uh, here's something that passed by my uh, email yesterday. This is from an interview with the novelist Philip Roth. Many of you know about Philip Roth, probably maybe the most prominent American novelist over the last 20, 30 years, one of them anyway. Um, <clears throat> and um, this is just in case you think nobody else is interested in these subjects we're talking about except us. So the interviewer says to Roth, each of your books seems to have explored various questions you had about life, about sex, about aging, about writing, about death. What questions preoccupy you now? So in other words, after life, sex, aging, writing, and death, what could be more interesting than all that? So here's what Roth says. Currently, I am studying 19th century American history. <laughs> the questions that preoccupy me at the moment have to do, but I did not make this up, folks, really. The questions that preoccupy me at the moment have to do with bleeding Kansas, Judge Tawney and Dred Scott, the Confederacy, the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendments, President Andrew Johnson, the Ku Klux Klan, the Freedmen's Bureau, the rise and fall of the Republican Party as a moral force, etc. Then he goes on to other things uh, later in the century, uh, the strikes of 1877, uh, the rise of Jim Crow, Chinese immigration, women's suffrage, the temperance movement, the populists, etc. Figures like Charles Sumner, Thaddeus Stevens, Frederick Douglass, Lincoln, etc., etc. So I mean, I, I'm going to invite Roth to come and sit in on this class, actually. Why not? He lives in New York somewhere now. So anyway, so these subjects are of great interest out there, not just in our class. As I said earlier on uh, this semester, uh, the difference, well, one of, the, one of the, the differences between the historian and the people who lived at the time we're studying is hindsight. We know what happened, right? That gives us a tremendous advantage in going back and studying a time period, but it also poses a tremendous danger to us. People at the time, people in the 1850s, did not know what was coming. They did not know they were living in the pre-Civil War decade, right? But we know that. And therefore, there is a temptation which most historians, well, all historians, everybody succumbs to in one form or another of looking at this period as the road to civil war, right? We know civil war was coming. They didn't know it. But once it happens, we can see a pathway leading that way. But of course, that pathway is, an, is a somewhat an invention of our own as historians. Um, and many other things were going on in the 1850s that did not seem to be part of a pathway to civil war, and therefore historians may ignore them or slight them because they don't seem to fit into this narrative trajectory that we, uh, that, that we build. Now, the value is we actually can explain the civil war, at least we try to, uh, and people before it were not thinking about that, obviously. But anyway, what is my point? One of the major phenomena, so to speak, of the, middle of, of the middle of the 1850s is something that doesn't seem to have anything to do with the coming of the Civil War, although perhaps it does in some way, which is the rise of nativism, or that is to say anti-immigrant sentiment. Not only sentiment, but political mobilization around hostility to immigrants. Um, what does that have to do with the Civil War? Actually, this is a true story. Uh, years ago, I was giving a lecture up in Boston, and I took a taxi from the airport, and the driver was a recent immigrant from Eastern Europe, actually, and started talking to me, and what do you do? I'm a teacher. I'm, what are you lecturing on? I'm lecturing on this civil war, you know? And he said, oh, there was a civil war in this country? He just arrived. There was a civil war. I said, yeah, we had a civil war back in the 1860s. And he said, so who was fighting, the native people versus the immigrants? That's what he thought, because, you know, there's a lot of hostility to immigrants nowadays. He thought we had a civil war. No, but that's not what it was, obviously. And therefore, if that's what it was, then the nativist movement would be a much stronger part of our narrative. Um, so, but we do need to look at this, because it is a very important feature of this era where we're studying. <clears throat> 